Welcome back, baseball fans, to the eighth and final round of the draft. Uh, most teams have completed their rosters. Um, after the eighth round of the draft, we have the uh, free agency period where teams finalize their rosters through the token system, which is another video and another thing altogether. But let's get through the eighth and final round of the draft. This would be 1970, the initial year of the timeline, the time, the year of the smallest available talent pool. So if you struggle, it's not a big deal. You only have to have this guy on your team for one year. That's why we save the small talent pool year one for the eighth and final round. We'd rather have the big talent pool be your fifth rounder because he's going to be in your team for four years unless you manipulate a trade or something or cut him. So with further ado, the first pick in the eighth round was announced a long time ago on day number one at pick number one when the Indians took Frank Robinson number one overall. They also announced that Tony Horton would be their eighth round pick. Okay, the second round. Colorado Rockies needed to look for a left-handed hitting shortstop with power and they got one <laughs> who hit 192 but he's got power Jim Driscoll um, again they have Rick Auerbach and Jim Driscoll at short Colorado yeah okay uh, the Toronto Blue Jays let's see here they announced Frank Fernandez earlier in the draft nice little draft for the Blue Jays all right Chicago Cubs are on the clock they already had. They need to get a catcher. They already had Randy Hundley in his minus three arm. He's a right-handed hitter who has a low batting average. So they went out. They got a left-handed hitting catcher who can't throw. Boom. That's a perfect sort of caddy for each other. Bob Taylor, a player who only played for a couple years in baseball. And perfect player to work with Randy Hundley in Chicago. All right. With the fifth pick, uh, Al Farrar was announced earlier in the draft by the Padres. With the sixth pick, Ed Stroud was announced by the Rangers. A lot of guys were already picked in this round, making it easy. Okay, and then with the seventh pick, Atlanta is the first team to improve a guy retroactively. They had the 1971 Felix Mion, and they said, let's go back into time. Why? Well, because we can. We have the pick. We had Felix Mion as a 280 hitter. And then we realized, wait a minute, back in 1970, he hit 310. So let's do it. So they did it. So now they have to add a 1971 player in the token round. And that'll be Mari Wills, who was going to be the 1970 player. So basically, Wills and Mion will flip years 70 and 71 in this process. Smart, clever moves by the Braves. They're really cutting the gap with the Mets in the East. Atlanta could be a wild player in this uh, season. Milwaukee Brewers took a guy off the waiver list because they needed a guy to throw with his left hand. Dan McGinn can do it. He picks up a ball with his left hand through 130 innings with a 5.44 ERA and 1.776 whip. But he threw with his left hand. Congratulations, Dan McGinn, for that choice. All right, the Ohio players... Nice little player on the waiver list again. You're going to see a lot of guys who've been on the waiver list the entire draft. Now they're now they're starting to pop off left and right. Roberto Pena had been playing for the Pirates at shortstop the last couple of years. He was put on waivers, and the Ohio players pick him up to play with Daryl Thomas at short. They'll complement each other there. Switch hitter and a right-hander. Arizona, again, has been quiet and not doing a thing for four rounds as they finished their draft. They went out for cocktails, and they'll be back later. All right, the Expos announced earlier when they announced Rusty Stahl the, that they would take Mac Jones as well from 1970. The Cardinals, when they announced Chuck Taylor, they announced Julian Javier as well. Same with Florida. When they announced Jose Pagan, they announced Chico Simone. Just scooting through the eighth round of this draft, which is what you want to do. All right, the White Sox. Nice little pick here. They had a good throwing defensive catcher, to, uh, Mike Ryan. And they actually found 
Tom Egan as a nice bat against right-handed pitching only. So Egan and Ryan can platoon. One can throw, one can catch and hit. Um, the Pirates, they needed a catcher because uh, they for saying the backup Manny Sanguian. And they took his teammate in 1970, Jerry May. He was on the waiver wire. It's always good to reunite players with the previous team. All right, we talked about Seattle was hoping Joe Floyd would be available. Congratulations, Seattle. Joe Floyd was available in all his grandeur and splendor. Joe Foy won a World Series for the Mets last year, and he is now a member of the Seattle Mariners. Congratulations, Joe Foy. Speaking of the Mets and World Series, the Phillies needed a catcher to platoon with Tim McCarver, and they found Pat Corrales, who got a World Series ring with the New York Mets last year. How about that? Back-to-back -back guys put on waivers by the Mets were scooped up in back-to-back -back picks. Here, here you see New York. This is the team that waived them last year. So these are the two guys the, the Mets waived because, in addition to Tommy Ag, they couldn't keep Tommy Ag. He ended up on Toronto. They couldn't keep Joe Foy. He's a, he's still in Seattle. Pat Corrales on Philadelphia. So it was a very talented New York Mets team that won the World Series last year. All right, the Yankees added Gene Michael when they added Fritz Peterson. Portland needed a back-end reliever closer type. And believe it or not, Claude Ramon for the Expos had 23 saves in 1970 with a 4.43 year. Right? He's good at better against righties and lefties. He's going to have to suffice for Portland. There's no relievers out there anymore. It is dry. The well is dry. There's starters, but no relievers that are any good. All right, the Twins added Ron Paranowski when they added Killebrew earlier. As the Vegas team, Las Vegas added Art Shamsky when they added Ray Culp. And folks, another team, Kansas City Royals. We admonished them last in the last round for forgetting to add left-handers, and they were hoping Bob Veal would still be available. And presto, Bob Veal is available. A left-handed pitcher put on waivers by the Pirates because they added Jim Rooker. It's, technically, it's almost like a trade. Rooker was on Kansas City, ended up on Pittsburgh, and Bob Veal was on Pittsburgh, and now is on Kansas City. Pitches on three days rest with a 392 ERA. So Kansas City salvages those last two picks nicely, and so they've re they've righted the ship. They are going to be okay. Don't have great starting pitching. So that's not normally a World Series trend. I was evidenced by the Mets and Orioles have an outstanding starting pitching in the last two champions. So might have to pump the brakes a little bit on Kansas City's aspirations here until Leonard Gurr and Splitorf show up. Houston had the rights to Jim Merritt and they finally turned the card in in the eighth round. He was let go by the Cincinnati Reds. They didn't want him. He had won 20 games in 1970. But the ERA was very high because the Reds were going to win a lot of games anyway. So Houston has him. Houston also has Jack Billingham. Oh, by the way, Houston also has Joe Morgan. So you can see the waters getting ready for the Houston-Cincinnati blockbuster in a couple years. All right. The Orioles announced Dick Hall earlier in the draft when they announced Paul Blair. And how about this? Oakland, last, uh, they they put Jim French on waivers, a minus one arm catcher with Gene Tennis's plus two arm. Jim French is an on-base machine, as is Gene Tennis. So that worked out pretty good. They brought their guy back. Well, you see a lot of teams bringing their guys back because they know that's, that's the fit. They were trying to improve on the fit, so they're just going to go back to what they know. All right, the Dodgers added Claude Osteen when they added Andy Messersmith earlier. The Angels added Cesar Tover when they added Bill Singer. And then finally, the Reds punched the ticket a long last for Dick Bosman, who may be one of the most important players in this carryover league. He is the Cincinnati Red number two starter on three days rest because he would be the best guy available that they could find as 
all of Major League Baseball was terrified of the Reds getting a stud number two behind Gullet. So Bosman was made available through Texas with a 122 whip, an ERA of three and 230 innings. They still have Gary Nolan and Ross Grimsley. They've been steadily improving that starting rotation the last three years. They have been in the World Series, been in the championship round, have not gotten a ring. They're hoping Bosman helps the Reds do that thing. All right, the Giants announced they had Sam McDowell earlier in the draft when they signed McCovey. Boston, of course, Rico Petroselli was added when they added Reggie Smith from 1970. Know about that. And finally, the Tigers and Mets added their final pieces. Detroit simply needed, boy, Detroit's infield. After the debacle last year on the left side of that infield where they had Elliot Maddox, Kevin Collins, and Dick Trzewski, this offseason they've added um, Ed Brinkman, Cleet Boyer, and Woody Woodward. All, all can field, some can hit, and so they've completely changed the look of the, their defense on that side of the infield. That was the worst part about the Tigers last year that went to the World Series. They fixed that. Is everything else going to continue for the Tigers? Do they, you know, can they get back to the World Series? We'll have to wait and see. And finally, the New York Mets waited until the eighth round to look for the long man in the bullpen, and there wasn't one. Gary Gentry was a number four starter, and they asked Gary, how about going into the bullpen this year? Because there aren't any relievers out there you'd pitch more frequently because the number four starter on the Mets is like the Maytag repairman. He doesn't get much work because they got Seaver Coos and Matt Lack and they pitch on three days rest as much as possible. You can run with a three-man rotation if you have days off. And if you sweep teams or beat up teams pretty badly, you create days off. In any event, Jim Bunning, 38 years old, put on waivers, was sitting out there. He brings experience, of course, to a Mets team. Jim Bunning, 38 years old. His statistics are a little worse than Gentry, but he can only start, he can't relief. And he won't be asked to do much. And it's not a concern. Uh, you know, if he starts getting knocked around, the Mets have the bullpen. And the Met bullpen doesn't get a lot of work because of Seaver, Kuzman, and Matlack. So. Jim Bunning is a starter seven. He's the last pick in the draft, in the eight rounds of the draft. And next up, we'll wrap it up with the token round of the draft as teams finalize a roster. Thanks for checking this out. We'll see you next time.